Ladies and gentlemen, we will now move. Thank you, President. Not at all. We will now move to our next speaker, and our next speaker is Chief Victor Ewere. Uh, you will notice that Chief Ewere is currently retirement. Professor uh, Chief Ewere has had over 24 years of experience as a chief engineer in the oil and gas industry. We heard Professor Dode talk about all the oil and gas in Roboland. And this is somebody, Chief Ewere, who has had experience as an engineer in that sector prior to his retirement. He is one who has a proven record of complex construction and engineering pro projects, and he has had results. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Chief Victor Ewele. Thank you very much, Vice President of the UPU in the UK. I bring greetings from Canada to all RoboSons admirers of goodwill in these perilous times of the world history. Being circumspect by the ravenous disease called COVID-19. I pray for God's divine intervention through his mercy to forgive us our sins and rid the world of this disease in Jesus' name. I had uh, divided my speech in about eight sections and I will go them one by one. Unfortunately, uh, I, have, I did not present it to the president for it to be screened. But I shall do so in due course because I have been very, very busy here in Canada trying to settle in. Like he said, I came from Nigeria just about eight months ago with my wife to become or uh, as permanent residents in Canada. My children haven't insisted, I have about five of them here, insisted that in retirement I must come over because Nigeria was becoming a place almost uninhabitable by humans as a result of the maladministration that persists and still persisting and we pray should not persist further by human beings, our so-called leaders, who have made us beggars, even in our own land, our rebel nation. Like the president has said, yes, I worked in the NMPC as an instrument engineer, and I was I retired as a manager. I'm a specialist in DCS, that is distributed control systems, instrumentation by digital. Today I'm in Canada, and by the grace of I can still provide my service to humanity, even at, at my age. So let me start by appreciating the UPU in London for this international webinar on the subject matter 2023, the leadership we want. This certainly is very timeless as we inch into a time space that is working itself into our consciousness of some sort of void space, a lacunary arising as a result of unintended and highly undesired slumber 
leadership can be looked at from various or varying ramifications and grades. And the beauty of it can be harnessed from all its variables. We can and should begin to think of leadership from the angle of leadership at a nuclear family level, that is father, mother, and children, leadership at the extended family level, leadership at Ogbe level, that is the traditional quarters. I'm going into all this because I want to build up how we have human beings that have evolved to bring people who will man the affairs of their world. So if we have good foundations at these levels, well-defined, well-articulated, then we'll spend little energy in trying to remove people we entrust with leadership, people we entrust all our life, and yet the methods around. We also talk of leadership at the age mid level. Immigrated, a emitter, and so on. Then we can move to leadership at the village level. Then from the village level, we move on to the clan level leadership. Then, of course, the societies like the UPU of London that is doing so well, the unions, the associations. Then we can talk of the kingdom level leadership. As a matter of fact, of recent, the kingdom level leadership had not done well, I dare say, to the contribution of leadership, of political leadership in the land. Then finally, sorry, before that, we also talk of workplace leadership. Workplace leadership. A lot of leadership confusion take place, takes place at that level. And finally, we talk of leadership at the political level. All these levels are definitions to the character of persons at the political level, ultimately. Our views on all of these will add up to our robot political leaders for 2023. Unfortunately, we do not have any documented and proven compendium of our past leaders that can serve as authentic compass for our demand on our aspiring political leaders. In some advice, advanced climes around the world, such documents exist and leaders are frequently exposed to them. You hear them making informed references to, the, to such records as they strive to model their thoughts and actions on those lines. Of course, moderated by a contemporary developmental bench marks of times. Permit me to therefore seek the indulgence of our most respected Gidigba Union 
our North Tan Star, the UPU, to bring this to creation. That is to create what I want to call the Urobo Leadership Compendium, which from time to time, our aspiring leaders can make references to and correct them where they need to. Now, let me go into the political leadership that we have had in the days of our great ones, our forefathers, our elders. The periods of the emerging Urobo awakening cannot be mentioned without the great roles of principally the great low type principally to Chief Mokoromowo. Here was a man that was very selfless towards the course of Urubo political emancipation. He provided a leadership that was financed by his personal wealth. He was a notable trader and his fame swept through the then Wari province to the coast of present day rivers and Aquaibom states, even up to Cross River State. We owe him a glowing tribute. This is not to reduce the sterling contributions of other robo nationalists in personalities of the Akabaride of Ovu, that is Chief T.A. Salubi and others. They all played roles which made robo nation what it was at that time. They lost the robo pride in us and erected institutions of pride in the robo lands that stirred envy from our neighbors. We talk of robo college. I know how the robo college was situated strategically situated in the pleasant location. It was all based on some political calculations. To ensure that there was no surge in the land acquisition, forceful acquisition of our land by our neighbors. In the glare of history, we see Urubo College GCU, the prominence of Osapele, even in the days of Western region. The robo spirit to confront threatening, fiery neighbors. We are aglow. In the days of the Western region, Sapele ranked at par with Ibadan, even when Ibadan was the seat of Western regional government. Saple indeed was a town to be reckoned with in the, in the area now called uh, former Bender State. So you can see that Urobos had pride of place when we mention politics in the Western region, politics in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, the first CBN governor was an Urubo man. First CBN governor. Those were the glowing days. Those were the golden days of Urubo. And these things came to be, not without struggle, but it, they all came to be through 
the leadership we had in those great wars. They were men of vision. In short, they could fit into what we can class as leadership qualities that we need. They communicated, communicated well. They were aware of their environment. They had honesty. They assumed integrity. They were able to build relationship across the clans. Standing relationships that drove love through the spines of all robots, no matter where you came from. They also helped other robots to reach their goals. Yes, those were the Mokoro days. Those were the Mokoro days. Mokoro did not stand alone as a wealthy man. He pulled others to be wealthy as well. They were leaders who were not afraid to confront and speak to power. Behind all this, I must also mention that the robots of them stood behind their leaders. They listened to their leaders. Whatever their leaders told them, they followed. It was not a, a thing of pride to disobey the leaders in those days. But I'm afraid if I can watch for that now. Because as we see it now, knowledge and wealth seem to be playing very negative role in the leadership management in Urubu land. Now we can go on listing things that made Urubu to be heard, made Urubu voice to be important and sought after in Nigeria. In all of the foregoing, The question that stares us on our faces is where did we get it going wrong in our time? Can we view it from the window of contemporary decay that we see within the context of the sweeping Mali bedeviling Nigeria? Can we feel free to extricate ourselves from all of it? Must we not stop short to flow with the general now norm in our country? For at the end of the day, it is how quickly we can salvage our losses from the ruins of Nigeria powered by the potentials in it, in our population and resources. The one thing we can resolve to do is to have a long, hard look at things and religiously follow products of our think tank. In this respect, let us examine where things seem to have gone wrong. Let us take a look on where we once were, where we are now, where we want to be, and how we shall get there. Where we are now. Sorry, where we once were. From the days of Chief, of Chief Mowo, 
we took our pride of place. There was leadership that directed affairs and robots spoke with one resolve and things went well. Laying lasting foundation for the robo nation. Robo sons and daughters acquired relevant knowledge that pushed enviable frontiers. The days of the Salubis we are not different, and the robo minds we have felt in the Western and Midwest regions. We had a governor of the Midwest. We were in forefront in both the greatness of Midwest region and Delta states. Things wobbled in Delta states. A later day complacency that culminated in clannish and block destructive rivalry set in. The hand of Esau came into play. The first civilian governor was an Urubo, naturally, and the pride was still intact. That was in the days, the beginning days of the Midwest and the Delta, Delta state. As the army came in, after the rule of that Northern governor, elections were conducted and Ibori was elected. Things were never to remain same or even improve. The heights started to crumble. Expectations were dashed, viewed in seemingly favorable calculations and expectations. Urobo repudiated the crushing impending calamities, insisting we yet had things under control. Every clan, every group went their ways to seek succor as the events no longer, as the center no longer held as it once was. Robo unity was falling. The mighty was falling at home and Abuja. As resilient as the robo spirit, the robots decided to come again, to come together again. And they had a balance. Robomena of Wavo. That was very inspiring. And a lot of robots found courage to come out again, no matter how weak. All of this happened in spite of the fact that, like I said before, we produced the first Nigerian central bank governor. This was also a group, the Robo, that also produced the first civilian and military governor of Midwest state and region. But we survived. We survived. For over 20 years now, and counting, I think we need some oxygen. Because what we planned for in Delta State 
certainly is not what we are reaping now. All based on some kind miscalculation. Kind miscalculation in the sense that we gave the power to govern the state at that time to a son. A son who seemed to have divided interests. But just like I said, we are headed for 2023. And with that slogan of Wavo, we know, I know that we shall get there. Now that brings me to the 2023 history for Urubu. Let not any Urubu on earth deride himself or herself that the Urubu fate can be reversed on a platter of gold. I dare say that most of our neighbors are jealous of us. And so we must be very weary in our dealings so that we will restore what we once were. Our neighbors are not relenting. The architect of Delta State rotation, governorship rotation, may just be in a reminiscence of some sort now as he listens to the echoes from around the state. I call on all robots to reverse the trends and make happy the souls of great robot men who actualized the creation of Midwest state and now the creation of Delta State. The Delta State was created with the hope that we are going into a greener land. But regrettably, it is not yet Uhuru. Now, having said that, I want to dwell specifically on the area of this webinar that was allocated to me. That is the Urobo demand, the irreducible must oblige by candidates for Urobo votes 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, compatriots of the Urobo nation, need I belabor the compulsive irreducible demands from politicians seeking our votes come 2023 in the face of what we've already heard in this webinar. As an extension, need I also remind us of the compulsive duties that fall due on the shoulders of our electorates, that is those of us or those of them who are going to vote to bring in our new leaders come 2023. Well, for the sake of clarity and those who may still find need for it, I shall go ahead to state the obvious. First, for politicians seeking votes to serve us. The word is to serve us. And so as they come, they must see themselves as servants or leader servants, as most people say. And also, I must speak to the electorates 
who wish to be saved. Because the coin has two sides, the head and the tail. The politicians who are seeking for positions have a responsibility. Those of us who are the electorates also have responsibility. And so the two must work together to ensure that the right candidates emerge at the next dispensation. Now for those who seek to lead us, they must be real leaders and therefore must show leadership every day, every week, every month, every year. The 2023 politicians must imbibe and demonstrate committed leadership, speak and act to restore the political pride of a robo man and woman, bring back the industrial glory of Urobo by ensuring that while the Maribond federal and state industries are brought back functioning, new investments are also injected into the land. They must work with colleagues across party lines to gainfully engage all levels of the citizenry in developmental activities. They must be knowledgeable and be abreast with the technological language of our times for the world is now tech driven. They must identify with the aspirations of our people proactively. They must be selfless. But what we have now is that most of our politicians go there, they warm the seat, as the popular saying goes, and even some of them sleep. They are not even abreast with what may be discussed, but at the end of the day, they append signatures to bills that are passed by their more agile colleagues. They must post posture and bring to realities harmonious cooperation with our neighbors. We are daily confronted with the murderous attack by strange elements from outside of our homeland with threats of domination and elimination. Our politicians must synergize to act and eliminate these fears. They must restore a true federal system of government, which was the basis that propelled the formation of Nigeria. For what we have now, although we say we come from a federal, a federal Nigeria, but it is not an inch what federalism should be. And of course, we all know that all this came as a result at the beginning of the war, the Nigerian Civil War, when the army felt that the best way to fight the war was to get the oil revenue, which to a large extent was not too bad. Little did we know that there was a hidden agenda. Haven't tasted of the wealth 
and propelled by the greedy nature of humans, they, reverse, they, they refuse to reverse the decision. And that, to a large extent, is responsible, has been responsible for our sufferings. And we pray that that suffering is terminated in due course, in Jesus' name. Our politicians come 2023 must be responsive, uh, responsive to old and or evolving problems confronting our people at all times. They must participate fully in government policy form formulations and see them and see to it that the interest of robo is protected. In the performance of their service to the people, a workable program must be evolved for the discussions of all political issues at the national and state levels okay. with the UPU. For the UPU is the blood of the robo nation. As blood is to human beings, so UPU has become to the robo nation. And so all things that will affect, that will determine the future of robo and the robo man and the robo land must get or at least the input or the nod of the UPU. It has come to that. We had allowed our politicians to do it all. But the question is, were we properly saved? And I think the answer is no. Must we continue in the no phase? This, the answer is also no. So we must participate through the UPU in carrying out the affairs of the robo man, the robo woman, the robo child. And I think that answer is yes. In doing this, a think tank for suitable projects conception shall be, com shall be coordinated and pushed at the various houses. These projects shall include, but not necessarily sufficient, they shall include industrial scholarship lobbying groups, placements of our sons and daughters in workplaces in Nigeria, and especially in Delta State. Our politician must, in the course, sorry, and there's a little bit. Our politicians will establish ways and means to enable the implementation of our co cooperation programs. Uh, such other innovative ideas that will better the position of Rubo Nation shall be demanded from our politicians. These, to my mind, are uh, irreducible minimum that we ask of them. Now, come 2023, like I said before, we, the citizens, also have roles to play. If you could, if you could summarize, uh, Chief Ewale, okay. obviously because of time. The roles that are critical 
So the decisions of Urobo cannot be overemphasized. All cooperative assistance must be given to politicians seeking elective positions. The unprogressive demands of our people on our politicians that we had the demand for money for votes must be discouraged and must be stopped. Citizens must realize that asking for immediate financial gains for votes simply implies that payments are being requested for commodities and once purchased become personal to the buyer, the politician. The citizens, citizens therefore, has no moral justification to dictate the term or pace of his activities because he has bought the commodities from them. Campaign finance, finances should cover communication, publicity, and such other logistics extant on efforts to get political plans to the electorate. Citizens must not allow self to be deployed as talks. It is worthless. Citizens must base their choices on political ideologies and programs of actual of for actualizations. They must not be swayed by clannish and other base considerations. They must seek tall riches on political drives. They must participate in all political activities and not stand aloof for they are the ones considered as the proverbial grass on which giants fight. Now, I, I hear people say that the oil is going out of, out of this, uh, uh, the world economy. I don't seem to agree with that. Oil, crude oil, shall remain relevant as long as human beings and technologies grow. Because I know that oil is not only used as fuel, it can be used for so many other things. And uh, you cannot use nuclear energy or such, so, or such other resources to produce uh, some of these products that we use as human beings. So oil for a long time shall remain. That is my belief. That is the little knowledge that I've gathered in my place of work and interactions with technologists all around the world. I thank you and wish all of us fruitful UPU ceremonies for indeed the progress of the Robo Nation. Wado Yeah. Robo Wado. Robo Wado. She say wale. Obviously, Robo ke wu. She dey wa bo tal nu le e wale Robo ke se wu le. Ajo. Eh, esa wa ta na wele ma mo ma wele we. Wo de no so. Wo to tali fu esu. Ta ke le wo bi fu. Wo da ta be che fu esu esu loro. We switched to Louvier, different kingdom, and then you went into the politics that is national. But you made some great emphasis there that we've got to always remember. You talked about the leadership we had. And you seem to postulate that when we add modern technologies, we should actually go back to the leadership that we had. Because in doing that, you said that the leadership we had relied on good communication 
relied on awareness of the environment that they served. They assumed honesty, you said, and there was integrity. Then you, you talked about the fact that our leaders were selfless and that they used their own resources to serve the people. And they were not selfish to the extent that they wanted well to themselves. They helped other honorable people to achieve progress. And they were not afraid to do what they did. I want to thank you, Chife Were. I just want to plead with you, Chife Were. You know that this presentation, we've got to publish it. It means that you would make it available in order that we're able to publish it. And I want to thank you most sincerely for your reference to our leaders of the past. I can tell you that even here present, participating in this conference, we have people representing that same past. I do know, for example, that our sister, uh, Cecilia Ibru, the wife, the widow of Chief Michael, Ibru, the one who is uh, running the Agbarao University. I know that she's here participating. Madam, we thank you for your presence. I also know that Chief Baroge, Johnson Baroge, is also here present. She said, why are you be speaking to people from California, people from Aberdeen in Scotland? You'll be speaking to people from China, I'm aware that from across the globe, people are participating today, and I welcome all of you. And so she said, well, they'd be ready to take questions, because there's no doubt that you have generated a lot of questions by your presentation. In fact, as you were speaking, a lot of people were writing things, trying to advise us on different aspect of this presentation. As somebody said, leadership should be service for all. We do not need selfish leadership. You address that. Rather, we should advocate for a selfless leadership, the leadership we have. Another person says it's important that we have groups like UPU. You emphasize that. You described the UPU as the lifeblood of the Yoruba nation. I don't think that there will be any description of UPU that will be beyond that. Another person said leadership is an important component of public policy strategy. And we can go on and on and on, everybody identifying with the position that yourself and Professor Dode have already espoused during this webinar. So I'm grateful to you. We are expecting that you will take questions at the end, and we're also expecting that you will provide for us a copy of your presentations. 